Nothing will stop a conversation in its tracks quicker than quoting Jesus, judge not lest you be judged. In this video, we're going to take a look at what Jesus actually meant when he spoke those famous words. So according to our culture, we should never judge anyone for any reason at any time. In fact, often people will draw upon the words of Jesus to stop a conversation that gets a bit difficult in this way. But as Christians, we live by a different standard than the world. So when someone says, you shouldn't judge, they are actually contradicting real love, the Bible, and plain common sense. So the next time someone pulls out this particular conversation stopper, I want you to remember three things. Number one, saying don't judge is not biblical. So it seems that everybody's favorite Bible verse, at least when they're trying to keep someone from telling them they're wrong, is Matthew 7, 1. So Jesus says, judge not that you be not judged. So that's the end of the conversation, right? Well, that only works if you scribble out the next six verses along with some other things Jesus said and a good portion of the New Testament. In fact, right after saying this phrase, judge not, Jesus lets his audience know that when they judge, they should be really careful to make sure their judgment isn't from a place of hypocrisy. So he says, first take the log out of your own eye, then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. In other words, don't point out a sin in your brother or sister's life before you confront the bigger sin in your own. But the whole point is to help you take the speck out of your brother or sister's eye. And actually, this requires you to judge that it's there. So Jesus isn't saying that it's always wrong to judge. In fact, verse 6 tells us not to give to dogs what is holy and not to throw your pearls before pigs. How can someone identify dogs and pigs unless they first judge correctly? So if we're still confused at all, just a few verses later, Jesus tells us to recognize wolves, which is his word for false teachers, by their fruit. Again, this requires us to judge whether or not these teachers are speaking truth or deception. Then in John 7, 24, Jesus couldn't be more plain. He directs his listeners to not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. Later in Matthew 18, verses 15 and 16, Jesus gives instructions about how to confront a fellow believer if they've sinned against you. And, and remember from before, don't forget to take the log out of your own eye first. The Apostle Paul echoes this idea in Galatians 6, 1. He tells Christians how to handle a brother who is caught in sin. He writes this, you who are spiritual, again, think without a log in your eye, should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. In 1 Corinthians 5, Paul tells the believers in Corinth that it's actually their job to judge other believers. He writes, what business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those outside. So telling someone they shouldn't judge is not biblical. In fact, scripture actually commands us to judge, but to do so carefully, to do so rightly, humbly, and without hypocrisy. The second thing I want you to remember whenever somebody brings up this point is that saying don't judge is just not logical. So imagine you're home alone and your doorbell rings. You peek through the window and you see a guy with a gun in his hand and he's wearing an orange jumpsuit and he's sweating and he's looking around really nervously. I mean, be honest, are you gonna open the door for him? My guess is probably not. But wait, why are you being so judgmental? Maybe he's not an escaped convict, but simply enjoys wearing orange jumpsuits while carrying his weapon uh, while he jogs outside. Who are you to judge? Obviously, this is an extreme example. No one would open the door for that guy, but it goes to show that literally everyone judges. We all make judgments about people every single day, and it would be beyond illogical and sometimes even unsafe to not judge. Plus, to even tell someone that they shouldn't judge is to judge that they're judging, which is considered by culture to be judgmental, but that requires making a judgment about all the judging. You know, you get the point. But that whole logical mess can be avoided by simply taking Jesus' advice to judge with right judgment. Okay, the final thing I want you to remember whenever somebody brings up the phrase, don't judge. Saying don't judge is not loving. 
Now, I haven't shared a lot about this publicly, but when I was younger, I was trapped in a toxic cycle that was brought on by an eating disorder. And one of my good friends, she was actually just this eternal people pleaser, and I know that she worked up every last bit of courage she could muster to confront me. And just to put it lightly, it did not go well. I not so politely invited her to stop judging me and back all the way off. But she didn't let go of it. Her determination to make sure that I was not only helped, but held accountable, it literally changed my life. I ended up confessing my secret and getting counseling as my healing began. So to this day, it chokes me up a little bit when I think about how much she loved me to do such a difficult thing, especially how difficult that was for her. So according to the Bible, love is patient and kind. It's not arrogant or rude. 1 Corinthians 13, 6 goes on to tell us that love does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but it rejoices with the truth. My friend couldn't rejoice at my wrongdoing. Had she simply ignored the speck in my eye and chosen not to judge, my life could have gone down a very different path. She judged me because she loved me, and there's a really good chance that it saved my life. Judging with right judgment is not only biblical and logical, but it's also the most loving thing we can do. So culture is always going to have its slogans and mantras and catchphrases, but haven't we as Christians always been countercultural? Sometimes Jesus calls us to judge each other. And as hard as that is sometimes, obeying his commands will keep us from being tossed about by the whims of a fickle culture that changes constantly. After all, the culture won't be there for you when your life or the lives of the people you love fall apart from following its advice, but Jesus will. He will always be there for you. And that's something that you can rightly judge to be true and reliable. Mm -hmm.